What's going on guys? In this one we're gonna be doing chicken cacciatore. It's super easy to make and tastes absolutely incredible. And this one is a highly requested recipe from you guys. I've seen it all the time in the comments and I'm finally gonna do it. And I'm also gonna start doing a lot more recipes that you suggest. So let me know in the comment section down below if there's anything that you wanna see and I'll add it to the list. Let's get straight into it. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right guys, to prep this dish, get yourself two medium brown or yellow onions that have been peeled and had their tips removed, leaving the root intact. Let's slice these in half through the root, then make thin slices across, stopping just before the root, which will hold it together, rotate it 90 degrees to make a horizontal slice through the center to break up the formation, and proceed to make thin slices to create a nice small and fine dice, just until we're left with the root, which can be saved for a stock along with the pills and tips. No great recipe is without garlic, so here is five cloves that have been freshly peeled with the woody ends removed. Place the side of your knife on top of them with the blade facing down, and then push down to crush and activate the allicin compound, which is what gives garlic its strong flavor and aroma, and proceed to give this a quick rough chop into small pieces, and you can do this on a fine microplane to create a paste if you prefer. Personally, I'm not a big fan of bell pepper or capsicum on its own, but in this recipe it works really well, so with one large red one, let's slice it in half lengthways, then simply snap off the stem or apex if you wanted to get technical, also peeling away the pith from inside as this can be quite bitter, and give it a few bangs on the bench to remove the seeds that don't want to leave. With this all cleaned up, we can then come through and slice across, creating nice thin strips, and you can dice this if you prefer, or if you really don't like it, it can be left out completely. Next we need two medium or average sized carrots that have been washed and the pills left on for added nutrition. Slice off the woody tip, saving them for a stock and proceed by slicing into thin circles the whole way across, making sure you don't have any runaway pieces and try your best to be as consistent as possible with the slices. 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces of button mushrooms is what we need next and these can either be thinly sliced like so or you can quarter them, the choice is completely yours. Now last but not least here are 7 grams or 0.25 ounces of both flat leaf parsley and basil that can be both scrunched up to make it easier to work with then grab a sharp knife and give them a quick rough chop just ensuring that there's no large leaves or stems. In a bowl add 5 bone in and skin on chicken thighs along with 1 tablespoon or 20 milliliters of unrefined olive oil, a large pinch of sea salt flakes and 20 cracks of black pepper. Remembering seasoning is always to your taste and you can always add but you can't take out. Let's then get our clean hands in there or use a spoon if you don't like rubbing thighs and massage the oil and seasoning all over just until they're completely coated and that means we can then start cooking. To do so, place a large high rimmed pan or pot over a high heat, add in 1.5 tablespoons or 30 milliliters of unrefined olive oil and place in the chicken skin side down, doing so in batches if your pan is small and sear these for 3 minutes or until golden and starting to crisp. Once nicely golden brown and crispy, flip them over and repeat the same 3 minute sear until golden all over, then after 6 minutes in total, these can then be removed and transferred to a plate or in a bowl for the time being, also turning the heat down to medium high. Let's now add in the finely diced brown or yellow onion and whilst mixing regularly, saute for 2 minutes or until lightly golden which will give this enough time to start absorbing the chicken flavour in the pan. Add in the roughly chopped or minced garlic and continue sautéing for 45 seconds, mixing the whole time just to prevent the garlic from burning. Next to go in is the sliced bell pepper or capsicum, the sliced carrots and the thinly sliced or quartered mushrooms and this can be given a big mix and sauté for 6 minutes, moving it regularly which will allow the vegetables to soften and start releasing their moisture and flavour. Once soft, add in 5 grams or 0.3 ounces of whole thyme, the roughly chopped flat leaf parsley and the roughly chopped basil for a beautiful fresh herbaceous flavour, also adding in 1 teaspoon or half a gram of dried oregano, 1 teaspoon or half a gram of dried rosemary and 3 dried bay leaves for a concentrated herbal flavour, then season with sea salt flakes to taste and pour in half a cup or 125 milliliters of red wine or chicken stock if you can't consume alcohol to deglaze the pan, mix this all through for those flavours to become friends and then reduce the wine for 1 minute. To build a strong flavour foundation to our sauce, add in 3 tablespoons or 42 grams of concentrated tomato paste, mixing it through for 1 minute just to allow it to start releasing its oils. Next for the sauce, add in 2.5 cans or 1 kilo of diced or crushed tomatoes, also adding in 1 teaspoon or half a gram of chilli flakes which are of course optional, then mix to combine and bring to a boil. I will also say that you can add in a little bit of sugar to cut the acidity from the tomatoes only if you prefer that flavour. Once boiling, reintroduce the seared chicken, pushing them down to get them fully submerged in the sauce, also adding in any resting juices for additional flavour, then give this one last quick mix, bring it back to a boil, reduce the heat to low, place on a lid and allow it to simmer for 40 minutes undisturbed. 
40 minutes later, carefully remove the hot lid, watching out for the escaping steam. Give the flavors a quick mix through and then check it for salt, pepper and sugar levels, adjusting accordingly to your taste. Then turn this off the heat and remove it from the stovetop. Now to serve this up, you can do it however you'd like, either eating it on its own or with some pasta, mashed potato, salad or even more vegetables. And this recipe serves two to three people, depending on the size of your thighs. Whichever way you served it up, make sure you hit it up with some cracked black pepper, some thinly sliced flat leaf parsley and basil for freshness and a nice little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil which leaves us with this delicious, healthy, beautiful and extremely comforting chicken cacciatore. And the only thing that's then left to do is make all of our efforts worthwhile and that is we can then dig in.